A fiery horse with the speed of light, the cloud of dust, and a hearty high old silver. The Lone Ranger. Faithful Indian companion Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Oh, Silver! Let's go, big fellow! I'm Silver! The Lone Ranger and Tonto were riding through the night on the gravel floor of an arroyo when they heard the shots. Oh, Silver, oh, 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 fella. oh fella. Easy. You heard that, Tonto? Ah, uh, it's gunshot. Which side of the arroyo? Me think it's that side. That's what I thought. Come on up to the top of the bank. Come on there, Silver. Get him up, Scout. Come on, fella. You go, boy. That's Come it. On, Come on, Scout. Come on. Easy, does it. Yeah. Hold it. Whoa. That light way over yonder. Yes, I see it. Maybe house. Maybe campfire. Too far to tell. Come on, Toto. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. As the masked man and his Indian friend raced across the level ground, the dim light took form. The glow resolved itself into a small window. The light came from a single candle that burned inside the one-room cabin. Just beyond the cabin, there were trees. The edge of a dense forest. Oh, Silver. Oh, 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 I wonder if those shots came from here. Uh, we soon know. Right there, Silver. <laughs> the door's wide open. Let uh, me see it. I'll take a look inside. Otto, there's a man in there on the floor. Uh, I'm hurt. Put the horses in back and take a quick look around. I'll see about the man. Uh, come, Scott. Come, Silver. Come, Silver. Steady there, steady. Help me. I'm going to. Let me see how badly you're hurt. It's bad, ain't it? You've been hit twice. You know who did it? It, it was the killer. The same one. The same one? What do you mean? He, he got the others. I, I'm number four. I I knew too much. Can you name the man who shot you? I, Name him just his name, that's all. Oh. How bad, brother hurt. Too far gone to help, Tonto. Just a minute. Oh, his heart is still beating. Get some water. There on the table. Ah, you get it. You can just get him conscious long enough to breathe one word. He'll name the man who shot him. Right here. Here, water. Pour some on this. Uh-uh. He said something about being the fourth man to die. Hey, that's enough. If he speaks, be sure to catch every word. Ah. No 
Joe Pete. Sometimes I think we're just a couple of plain and fancy fools to keep on being deputy sheriff. Well, it's better no job at all, Hank. It's all right till this mysterious murder man started operations around here. Yeah, I know. The past couple of weeks, we've done nothing but ride down a hundred odd blind trails. I'll lay two to one this here is to be another one of them. Where'd his nibs get the notion that the killer might go after old Clem? Oh, I don't know. Where's his nibs get all his other notions? Doggone his side, if he can't do his own work, why don't he resign as sheriff and let one of us have the job? Ah, don't be too hard on Demerick. It ain't his fault he can't walk. Well, maybe not, well, but you I You might can't. get crippled up with rheumatics yourself someday. Well, take my word for it, Pete. If ever I am, if I'm sitting a home while a couple of critters like you and me do all the work, I'll see that them same get the credit. Maybe Sheriff Demerick will give us the credit. Huh. That's funny, Will. You rave and rant and howl for action until we run this murder man down. When we do, he'll take all the thanks and reward money. You see if he does. Oh, stop your growling, Hank. Means us for not getting the killer, but won't give us no credit if we do. Yeah, there's Clem's cabin. There's a light going. They'll go to supper later than usual. Yeah. No, Pete. I think Sheriff Demerick's got spies. Spies? Yes, sir. I think he's got some glutes around town to whisper things in his ear. He sure has some way of knowing things. Hey, that's a horse. I heard it. Well, Clem don't keep a horse, does he? Not that I know of. He didn't have one last week. We better rein up right here and be careful how we close in. Who? Who there? Who? 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 Who there? Yeah, maybe we'll get a crack at the murder man, whoever he is. You better unlimber your gun. All right, now leave the horses at ground hitch. We'll go ahead on foot. Uh, keep your voice down. Yeah. There. The horse again. Yeah, it's beyond the house. Uh, Pete. There's someone moving about in there. I seen the shadow. Oh, keep close to the door. We'll jump in sudden. Yeah. This way now. I'll give the word. Whatever you say. Oh, now. I should pass. Take him up. Take him, Tonto. There they are. Take him away. Sorry. Oh, oh, let go of me. Lock his gun down, Tonto. Oh! You want to be mass killer, I'll get you. First time you get loose. Next time you call, don't telegraph. Oh. Come on, Tonto. Uh-huh. Hey, come on back here. Hey, Hank, they're getting away. Oh, my God. Where'd he knock my gun? Dad, rat it all. I can't find it. Get him, Pete. Come on, Tonto. Get him up, Scout. Hey, they're going oh, away. Oh, thunderation. Hank, what are you doing on the floor? That uh, mess, man, he tagged my chin. Uh, look at my chin, Sheriff Demerick. You can see that I sure stopped something mighty hard. Ah! Honest, Sheriff, we didn't have a chance. Those two must have known we were sneaking up. They're waiting for us as soon as we step through the door. Hey. Yeah, there was two of them there. Red, Redskin and the masked man. Well, why'd you let him get away? Why didn't you shoot him? Well, Hank was fall on the floor and the Redskin knocked my gun out of my hand. I'm a found it, they got away in the woods. It was no use trying to follow him in that woods, Sheriff. We figured we'd better come right here to you and tell you old Clem was dead. That's four deaths in the past two weeks. A uh, fine pair of nincompoops I have for deputies. Oh, if my legs were better... I'd show you young squirts a thing or two. Oh, we've done our best, Sheriff. Uh, your best wasn't good enough. Oh, we couldn't help it, I Sheriff. I told you two galoots that Clem was in danger. I bet you dawdled on your way to his place. Well... I knew it. How'd you know he was in danger, Sheriff? He was in town today. Called on Judge Parker and told him he had a pretty fair notion as to who the murder man was. He did? Yes. Judge brought him here to my house and told me about it. What did he say? He said he had some sort of clue to the man who killed Doc Robinson. Well, that'd be the same man that killed and robbed them two newcomers just before Doc Robinson was shot. Probably. Uh, did he say what the clue was? No, he promised to bring it into town tomorrow. Well, poor old Clem must have liked walking. It's four miles to his place. Uh, chances are Clem bragged all over town about knowing something. The murder man heard him. That's what I figured. That's what I thought would happen. So I sent you two to Clem's place, thinking the killers would go after that evidence. And what happened? You got there too late. No. Well, anyhow, Sheriff, we did learn something. We learned that there's two men instead of one. Yeah. Hmm? And we also learned that one of the pair is an Indian that's called Tonto. From the home of the crippled sheriff, Hank and Pete went to the cafe and told their story... By midnight, everyone had heard of Clem's death and the masked man and Indian who were to be hunted down. No one paid any attention to a tall stranger who had drifted into the cafe. 
There was no reason to suspect that he was the subject of most of the conversation, because he wore a disguise instead of the mask that the lawman had seen. Is Demery going to form a posse to find that mask hombre in the Redskins? Well, sure he is. The first thing in the morning. Oh, you start now till daybreak, I suppose. No. By thunder, I sure hope we get those killers. Oh, Clem was my friend. Well, we'll get them all right, won't we, Pete? You bet. Well, uh, do you think you'll recognize them? Yeah. What's that, stranger? Did you see the men who escaped from Clem's house so you can identify them? Doggone right. The mask one clipped me right here in the chin. Look, see how I'm swole up. Oh, yes, yes. Well, I'll get square. Just wait till I see him the next time. Look right at him, Toto. But he didn't recognize me without my mask. <laughs> We're uh, safe here in camp until morning. Tomorrow at daybreak, a posse will start looking for us. Uh, maybe it's bad we run away. Maybe better we stay in place of murder, meet Lawman. Well, we had to escape or surrender, Kimosabe. We'd surrendered, we might have been found guilty of Clem's death. Uh, Cards right. would have been stacked against us. Uh, what we do? Well, if we stay here, we'll be found. We go away? If we do that, the real killer will never be found. Taro, that man's guilty of four murders. He's got to pay. But... How we get proof? I, uh, I thought over a plan on the way from town, but uh, maybe a dangerous one. Oh, and what's your plan? Hello, you've got to go to jail, and I've got to put you there. The posse set out at daybreak. Four hours later, Sheriff Demerick sat in a chair on the porch before his office with a blanket across his knees. He was roused from a doze by a fierce clattering of hoops. He looked up to see Pete Hank and another member of the posse leading a furiously fighting paint horse. Hey, what the Sam here? Hey, Hicks on the rear. Outside the critter. Maybe you'll be quiet when you start dragging him. Oh, oh. Hey, hey, hey. Calm down. All right, that's up to say that. Hey, Sheriff, look at we got. What's that? It's the horse of that redskin, one of the two killers. He found his camp, Sheriff. Where's the redskin? Did you shoot him? Oh, we didn't see him. Looked all around, there's no sign of him. So we brought the horse in. We left a couple of men in hiding to watch the camp in case he goes back there. What about the masked man? There was no sign of him. How do you know that this is the redskin's horse? Well, there's a couple of clear footprints, Sheriff. They were moccasin prints. Uh. We compared them to some prints near Clem's house and they checked. This uh. is the right horse, there's no doubt of it. Hey, what's this coming down the street? Pete! That's the Indian. Well, sure enough, that's a critter. Yeah, but who's the old desert rat riding that horse and bag of them? Oh, he's got the red skin at gunpoint. Looks like he captured him. Shit, well, Look, he's marching right, right up here. Sure. Uh, Silver's know, pure white coat was dirty. So were the tattered clothes and the floppy hat that the slumped-over figure in the saddle was wearing. It was a curious disguise that the Lone Ranger had chosen to appear in town with Tonto as his prisoner. Oh, oh, there. Oh, hey, you engine. Get your hands up. We want you. <laughs> Now, hold on there, gents. This your critter's my prisoner. I guess him trying to steal more. Oh, no, me not steal him. Oh, Steve, too, huh? Me only try right him. <laughs> hey, look. The paint recognizes the red skin. Boy, Don, that's proof. We want you, Tonto. No, 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 we'll Jack, take yeah. charge of him. He's wanted for murder. Yeah. Murder, you say? Four murders. Well, is they a reward? That's none of your affair. We'll take charge of the prisoner. Now you get along. Well, if there's reward money coming, I should stick around. Maybe give me a little... I said clear out. Now I'm the law. If you don't, we'll throw you in jail for vagrancy or something. All right, Sheriff. All right. I don't get if that's the way you feel about it. I, I don't want me no trouble. Get up there. Curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. Judge Parker arrived at the sheriff's office soon after Tonto had been locked behind the barred door. Sheriff Demerick's two deputies carried the crippled lawman to a chair just outside the door of the cell. We'll be around, Sheriff. If you want us this hard. Uh, is it all right for me to talk to the Indian now, Sheriff Demerick? Go ahead, Charles, and see what you can do with him. <clears throat> hey, tell me your name is Tonto. Ah, uh, me, Tonto. Well, now, Tonto, let me tell you something. The law is more interested in a white man who wears a mask than in you. Now, if you'd help the law, it might help you when you go on trial. Well, me get proof that mask man, Tonto, not murder. Proof? Why, are you local Well, he Ryan? might be telling the truth, Sheriff. You remember what Clem said when he came to town yesterday? Huh. He was just talking. That killer's too sleek to let anyone have any proof against uh, him. Tonto. Huh? If you'll trust me, I might be able to help you. Oh, uh, me wait. The man who was killed last night said that he thought he could bring proof against the murdered man sometime today. Ah, and proof come tonight. How's it coming? Who's to bring it? I think you're an out-and-out -out liar. That's what I think. You wait. You see. Masked friend come here into town. Him bring proof against murder man. Him show everyone that Tonto not killer. Him show everyone who real killer is. You see. You mean to say that your mass friend is the one who's to bring that evidence? That's right. Sheriff, I wonder if we've been accusing the wrong people. Not on your life. But your deputies didn't actually see the murder. Well, they got here right after it. I understand they weren't near enough at the moment of the shooting to hear the gunfire. Well, what of it? There must have been considerable time between the shooting and the time Hank and Pete reached the house. Now, why would the mask man and the Indians stay around so long? They were searching the house for something or other. Uh, just a minute, Sheriff. Uh, Tonto, you said the mask man would come here with proof against the murderer. Ah, you wait. You see. Where is he going to get that proof? Of him come by way of Red Gap. Him come sometime tonight. Him show who killer is. <laughs> For some time after the judge had left, Sheriff Demerick sat in deep thought. From time to time, a townsman dropped in to see if he needed anything. At noon, a man brought a tray of food from the cafe. Put it right down here in the desk, Joe. There you are, Sheriff. Anything else? Joe, it's being said around town that we don't have evidence enough to hang that Indian if he goes on trial. You heard talk like that, didn't you? Well, uh, seems that the judge thinks there's room for doubt as to his guilt. Just so, just so. And because of that, some of the boys are talking of hanging him. What's there to it? Well, the sheriff, I haven't heard a word about a lynching. Just because I can't walk, some of the boys figured they could get away with stringing up the redskin. Uh, sheriff, is it true that a jury might turn him loose? How do I know? He's got to be tried on the evidence we got. If that don't convict him, he goes free. That'd be a downright shame. Joe, you sure you haven't heard any lynch talk? No, but it's a good idea. Of the boys here in the cafe have heard Lynch talk? Very word. We never had a lynching around here. Boys, old Clem is my best friend. It'd be a sin and a shame if that murdering redskin is to go free because we don't have more evidence. Hey, hey, no, the judge but... says he might go free. He and that masked man are as guilty as sin. They killed four people. That's right. Maybe we should see how a trial comes out. He ought to have a chance in court. Those killers never give anyone else a chance. Look, boys, easy to hold a necktie party after the sheriff went to bed. Even if he did hear the excitement, he couldn't do anything about it. Now, hold on. Wouldn't we be taking unfair advantage of the fact that Demery can't walk? But, Gala, boys... I'm for keeping things quiet so the deputies don't hear any talk. They're still out hunting the mass man. Now, uh, just a minute, boys. Before we come to any decision, let's see what some of the other fellas around town have to say about it. All right, let's find out. <laughs> One
Once born, the idea of a lynching gathered force as the day advanced. By late afternoon, a large majority were in favor of hanging Tommy without waiting for a trial. Those who had objected had been cried down. I'm all for it. Me too. Let's make sure that redskin don't go free. Just bring him up. Boys, boys, listen to me. Listen to me. As soon as the sheriff is in bed, I'll come and let you know. Then we'll move on the jail. All right. All right. in bed? Yeah, I helped him into the house and hung around nearby, watched till his light went out. Yeah. Come on, boys, let's go get that murder. Right. Come on. Bring up that battering ram. Stand back here so we can smash her against the door. Get back. Stand back so they can push the door in. All right, here we come. Let her go, boys. That's it. Now, let's fight. There's the cell. And there's the red skin. We come for you, Injun. Now we got to bust the lock on the cell door. Try a couple of bullets on her. Here, I got a gun. Now, let me get at it. Hold on there. Hold on, you pack of crazy Hey, hey, the deputy. Stop it. Would you come back into town? Never mind that. Break it up. Go on back home. You can't lynch that redskin. Who says we can't? We're going to. He's the murder man. Now, wait. Wait a minute. Listen to me. There'll be proof that he's not guilty if you just wait. Oh, you're just saying that so we break up. I'm giving you true facts. Just wait till a little later. We're going to hang the redskin. You can't stop us. Grab him, boys. Hang on to him. Let him go. You're making a mistake. Let him go, Stop. Hang on to him. No. Now try a gun on that lock. Did it? Boys, don't touch the Indian. Wait till the masked man gets here. He's coming from Red Gap. Just wait. That's all I ask. He comes here, we hang him too. Right alongside the Indian. Come on, Tonto. You've got a big appointment with the news. <laughs> The Lone Ranger had ridden out of town soon after appearing in the disguise of an old man. He stopped on the trail to Red Gap and removed the disguise. Then he donned his mask and waited until after dark. He was on the back trail heading toward town. The route from Red Gap went through a narrow gap that was ideally suited to the purposes of anyone who wanted to wait in ambush. A dark form crouched waiting as the masked man approached. The dry gulcher waited until he saw that the solitary horseman wore a mask. That's the man. He rested the barrel of his rifle on a rock and then drew careful aim. Before his finger tightened on the trigger, a voice spoke sharply from somewhere behind him. Drop it! Huh? No! We have you. I smashed his rifle. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, here's your man. We got him. Here's a big fella. There's a rope for him. No, no, wait. This will hold you. George, Pete, help me. Shoot that masked man. We're on that masked man's side, John Repulver. You bet we are, Dimlick. Oh. The masked man came to me and said you could walk. I wouldn't believe him. Uh, he talked for a solid hour last night, persuading me to help him. Last night? Yes. He's the one who put Tonto in jail. Then I talked to the Indian enough to make you think the masked man would come this way with proof against you. And you walked right into the trap. You walked as good as any man. The judge and I followed you all the way from your house. How'd you know so much? That was easy, Demerick. Old Clem lived long enough to name you. Clem? Boy. He told about two people new in town who were killed and robbed. Then the doctor was killed. Clem found a vest button near the doctor's body. Well, after thinking things over, Clem realized that the button might be a clue to the murderer. He came and told you about it. You went to his house last night and killed him, so he couldn't tell anyone else about the button. So chances are, Doc knew he'd fix you so you could walk. Yeah, fool sawbones. He'd be alive today if he hadn't put two and two together... And accuse me of doing for the newcomers. Pretty smart, sending me and Hank on a lot of blind leads. Yeah. We took our time going to Clem's house, and you had plenty of chance to get there ahead of us while we thought you was home in your bed. Pete, that's Hank right this way. Wondered why he didn't meet us to follow this killer. It's coming fast. Wonder what's wrong. Pete! Hey. Judge! Oh, there! Oh! The mash man! It's good you're here. Well, what's the matter? A lynch mob. What? what? I tried to stop him, but they grabbed me and held me. I just got away from him. They're hanging that redskin. I fixed that. You fixed it. Maybe that masked man's caught me, but I've done for his Indian pal. Here, Silver. You're going with me, Sheriff. Hey! Hold on a minute. You're going with me. If we're too late, I'm not sure what'll happen to you. Come up here. Hey! Let me down, Judge! Pete, stop it! Come, Silver! The race of a lifetime. Silver ran as never before, despite the double burden on his back. The mighty stallion seemed to recognize a different quality in the masked man's voice. Come on, Silver! He seemed to know a life depended on his speed.
Tonto was seated on his paint horse scout. His hands were tied behind his back and a noose was around his neck. From the noose, a rope went over a convenient branch of the hangman's tree. This is it, Tonto. Snap the horse out from under him. Right. Get up there. What's the matter with that horse? Slap the critter again. He's got hope. Get along there. Well, what do you know? Hey, here's my mask, friend. Him tell truth. Him tell me not kill her. Hey, he's got the sheriff with him. We'll have the sheriff in bed. What you doing with that mask, man? Get that man. Now, hold on. Don't shoot. We might hit the sheriff. Hold on. Hold on. Get him, boys. Make him turn me loose. Don't try it. I'll cut that rope, Tonto. For anyone who draws a gun, cut that Indian's hands free. I brought you your murderer. No, no, boys, don't believe him. Let me talk. Here's the man who couldn't walk. Get down there, Demerick. What? Look at that. Why, he's standing up. Yes, and he can walk. He walked to the pass to ambush me. The judge is on the way to back my story. So is Hank and so is Pete. Come to think of it, by Ginger Demerick, it was you that first mentioned Hank and the Indian. Here comes Hank and Pete. And the judge, right behind him. Well, cut that red skin loose. By thunder, boys, we've made a terrible mistake. Cut that rope off his hand. I'll do it. Oh, 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 oh. Boys, the sheriff is the killer. Hang on to Demerick. Throw him in jail. Well, you're free to go, Tonto. Doggone, it's a good thing that paint horse of yours was stubborn. Oh, hey, him not stubborn now. Him go and Tonto say so. Come on, Tonto. Get him up. Come to me. just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. (laughs) 